people's hearts and minds. And we pray this in your name. Amen. 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 That's right. Wow, what a beautiful testimony. Well, good morning, Celebration. How are you doing? All right, you're alive. Very good. Well, welcome, welcome to uh, our family here at Celebration, and welcome to those who are watching online, uh, maybe you're watching uh, live right now, maybe during the week, so we hope that this is a blessing for you. Thank you for being part of our Celebration family. I'm Pastor Vicente, and if you haven't figured that out yet, I'm the Hispanic pastor here, so let's leave it as that. All right, so we are in this summer series called Holy Heat Wave, Holy Heat Wave. And it's based on Luke 2, understanding the times. And Jesus was telling them, you know, you're so good at understanding climate and changes and why not, but you don't understand the times. And that's the task that we have this summer to, uh, for us to really understand what's going on and see the sign of the times. Pastor Derek will be back next week, so don't worry about that. Everything's good. Um, but normally he would have you standing at this uh, portion of the uh, service. I'm not going to do that. But I do want to go to the scripture today. And I'm going to use the New King James. All right. Luke 17, the first two verses. Luke 17 in the New King James. Wow. It reads like that. Or like this. <laughs> then he said to the disciples... It is impossible that no offenses should come. And we could just stop there and just do the whole message. Because it is impossible that offenses would not come. But woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a milestone or millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. God takes this serious. Then he should offend one of these little ones. You know, uh, when we uh, talk about sports or even the military, there is a phrase. And the phrase reads, the best defense is a good offense. The best defense is a good offense. Or maybe you have read it the other way. A good offense is the best defense. Or maybe you have heard um, say, the best offense wins. Well, is that the same? Does that apply in a Christian walk? And I would say no. And that's why I title my message, the best defense is not, is not a good offense. Because there's no good, good offense in the kingdom of God. So we're going to be talking about offenses today. Now, let me just set the stage here because I want to be very clear. I'm talking about offenses given and offenses taken. In other words, when you are offended. I'm not talking about when you're hurt, when you have received an act of violence or a hurtful action that really breaks your heart. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about, and not just talking about, I'm talking about offense, not something that really has broken your heart. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. So I don't want to minimize those areas where people really hurt us. So Jesus says it's impossible, absolutely impossible, that no offenses should come. So what is an offense? And you know what an offense is. All right. But biblically speaking, the Greek uh, talks about scandalon, scandalon, which is really the bait that you put in that, thing that lures animals or something into a trap, all right? So it's that bait that an animal sees that and goes into it and you catch the animal to keep him or kill him or whatever you do with that. So when we talk about offense, we're talking about two things mainly, the bait and the trap. Because offense is a bait and it's a trap. So what kind of things offend us? Well, we could all just come here and talk about that. What offends us? And uh, oh, what offends us? Yes. And let me just read some examples. Is that okay? Maybe, uh, I don't know, somebody doesn't appreciate my work. I'm mad. Somebody ignores me. How dare. I'm not included in something that I think I should have been included in. Somebody disagrees with me. 
someone doesn't meet my expectations. Oh, expectations. Somebody is inconsiderate. I have to wait in line for someone who's moving a little slow. I have to wait in traffic. Help us, Father. Somebody takes your, oh, I love this. Somebody takes your parking space when you've been waiting and ready to go up and somebody comes and serves and drives us crazy. Not having my opinion, appreciate it. Even people that don't believe the way we do. There are tons of areas, examples, circumstances where offense comes. So what do we do with offense? What do we do with it? And let me just propose three things, and it's in your notes. You can just fill in the blanks. Let me start with the fact that when we talk about offense, we need to acknowledge it. We need to acknowledge the offense. You can write in parentheses if you want in front of it, don't ignore it. Don't ignore the offense. The offense. Acknowledge it. Look what it says in, Ma in Matthew 24. These are verses 10, 11, and 12. Matthew 24. Um, it says, and then many will be offended. Will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because loneliness, is that how you say it? Lawlessness. <laughs> will abound, the love of many will grow cold. When we talk about Matthew 24, normally we're talking about the signs of the end times, right? And we cite things like rumors of wars, actual wars, and earthquakes, famines, etc. But there is one area that we tend to ignore and we don't think is, sign, is the sign of the end times. And the Lord Jesus said it in verse 10, many will be offended. It's one of the signs. Now, Pastor Derek, by the way, if you are here, you're a guest here first time, um, Yes, it's a good thing I'm not the lead pastor here. Pastor Derek is. He will be back next week, so don't worry. Everything is fine. Just wait another week. But when it comes to talking about the end times, he always says, well, what I can say is that today we're closer than what we were yesterday. And tomorrow we'll be closer even. I'm like, oh, well, that gives us a good timeline. But going with that thought, offense is going to increase. It's not like offense is going to go away. It's we're going to fa face more and more offense as the Lord Jesus comes back. Now, let me just say this. Bottom line. Offense is a demonic spirit that is sent out from hell to steal the anointing, to steal God's blessings, and to steal our peace. And some of you may say, oh, he's talking about Satan again. He's talking about demons. That's all he talks about. No. There is a book and, and, uh, written by John Bevere. John Bevere about offense. It's called what? The Bait of whom? The Bait of Satan. <gasps> oh, yeah, Pastor, why are you talking? Oh, but John Bevere is such a good author. Yeah, if he talks about the devil, that's okay. No, listen. Offense comes from the pit of hell. Unless you prove to me that God gives us the spirit of offense, which nowhere in the Bible says so. So Satan works day and night to cause offense in your life and mine. Why? Why is that important to him? Very simple. Because when you have offense in your life, you cannot grow or mature spiritually. You cannot succeed in life. It's a roadblock. Churches cannot grow. If the leadership of a church is dealing with offense 
or the congregation, your part here, maybe not your part, let's just talk about celebration in Espanol, not, not celebration in English. If the congregation has offense, there's no growth. Why? Because it's a road block. That's what Satan is there trying to cause offense. Put in the bait for us to take it, to lure us into the trap. Now, um, what happens if the worship team is fighting? What happens if the leader of the worship today, Pastor Jeff, was leading the team today? What if he has offense with other members of the group? Or what if they have offense with him? They don't, by the way, okay? But what if? Do you think God would just flow through that? No, no. That's why this is so important. This topic is extremely important. Now, so what happens when we see offense? Yeah, we acknowledge it. And when you see it, well, my friends, you're going to have to confront it. You have to confront it. Now, let me tell you something about me. I don't like confrontation. Don't like it. I run away. But sometimes we have to do that. As leaders, we have to do that. And at my age, the Lord is still kind of teaching me a couple things. One of them is you, as long as you have the truth, confront the situation. So imagine that somebody in the congregation, again, not this one, maybe upstairs, whatever, uh, they're always offended about everything, about the music, about the lights, about the volume, about the way the pastor dresses, about the way the pastor has a Spanish accent. Oh, I'm offended. I don't like it. I'll, I won't come back. What if we get all offended? What do we do with that? We need to confront it. Yes, with love, but we need to confront them. Should the person leave? Well, here's... <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. We have been called by the Lord for a task. We, as a church, as a unit, the Lord is counting on us, on you and me, to go and deliver those who are slaves, to go heal those who are sick, to go bring salvation to those who don't know the Lord. We have a task. We don't have time to be west wasting on offense. And when there is a person that's like, hey, me, you know, that stops the flow. Now, it doesn't mean the person has to be kicked out. No, the person needs to be talked to and hopefully understand. But eventually, you finish the line. Here's the problem. Many times we think we're in the right. I'm always in the right. I'm in the right. This is how I see things. This is how I think about things. This is how I read the word. This is how I think it should be done. This is how, this is how I, 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 I. Can we admit that perhaps we could be wrong at least once in a while? We're not always right. And it, it takes a humble heart to say, maybe I'm wrong. Lord, show me. Let me know if this position that I'm taking, if this, the way I'm seeing things, if what my brothers and sisters are doing is the right thing or not. You tell me. Not my friend, not Facebook, not somebody. The Lord, the Lord. All right, so it's important. It's important that we do that. And I believe this with all my heart, that the root of offense is pride. Because it's all about you. It's I don't like, I don't like, I don't think, I don't agree, I, I, I. Pride. There's pride there. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, see, and, 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 and my issue is, I try not to, I, I, honest to God, I, I think the best of people. So when there's an, an issue and the issue is constant, I'm like, no, it'll taint, it'll be. But the problem is that if we don't confront that soon enough, 
then it creates roots. And it's harder to pull those roots later on. So the earlier you address this, the easier it is for the offended party and for the party that offends. All right? We need to acknowledge it. Number two, what do we do with offense? Number two, we reject it. We reject it. You can put in parentheses, don't take it. Don't receive it. Don't take it. Don't assume it. Proverbs 19, 11. In honor of my pastor, I'm switching to NIV because that's what he loves. We'll go back to the New King James translation. But the NIV says, a person's wisdom, a person's wisdom, yields patience. Patience. Do we have a lot of patient people here? Hopefully, I don't know. Amen, perhaps. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory, in other words, it is to your own benefit to overlook an offense. It is to your own benefit to overlook an offense. So what this is saying is that a wise man or a wise woman, and I'm talking to wise people here and there, a wise man knows how much he or she has been forgiven. Knows how much he or she would be a false sinner without the work of the Lord Jesus. And because you and I understand that, we can extend the same love and mercy and grace. And we can maybe overlook some offenses. We don't have to be so touchy. All right. Not all offenses just take us down. He's not talking about a heart of forgiveness. We also have a heart of forgiveness. That should be the immediate thing we forgive. But we still may take the bait of offense. So includes the ability to shrug off. Is that a word? Shrug off to. Uh, huh? Shrug. <laughs> to get rid of. To get rid of things, all right? And not, here's the word, not to be hypersensitive. Mm. Listen, I am part of a network of Hispanic pastors. Let's talk about Hispanic pastors so we don't offend anybody here. Hispanic pastors. I'm a part of that network uh, here in the Twin Cities. I coordinate, you know, like gatherings, prayer time, blah, blah, blah. It drives me insane that even some pastors are so sensitive. Hyper. I'm sensitive. But no hyper. Maybe. And I many times I say, Pastor, talk to us about this. Yes, you need. See, here's the problem. We, we have heard, perhaps, that when it comes to offense, you have to create fences. In order to avoid offenses, create fences. And... Yes, sometimes you have to do that. The problem is if the fence is too tight, nothing is going to come in. You're not going to be effective. You need to have a fence sometimes that is permeable. Tell me what that word, permeable? Permeable. Let's things in. That's what you need. To speak English correctly, that's all. All right. So, for, for real. But it happens at every level. It happens with all of us. I you know the way I look, you know, they looked at me, the way they said it, what they said to me, how they greeted me. So, oh, God, help us. So, the Bible says, don't take offense. Don't take offense. Proverbs 12, 16. A fool, <laughs> a fool is quick-tempered. Always, you know, a little match. You know, don't fire me up. But a wise person stays calm when insulted. Do you stay calm when you're insulted? And simply because somebody wants to offend me, it doesn't mean that I have to take it. I don't have to take that offense. We need to be people 
that are not, not easily offended. Let me tell you a secret about me. Now, you probably think of me, I hope, <laughs> um, as a person who is kind of like even, like, you know, nice guy, and doesn't get too mad, right? Say yes, please. <laughs> now, there, is, there are things in life that drive me up the wall. One of them is customer service. And I think after COVID especially, customer service has gone down in every area. And especially if I'm paying for something, I do want good customer service. But the reality is, I, my sons are here, my family's here, and, and, and they can tell you the truth. If I get bad customer service, I simply turn into Godzilla. <laughs> I wish I could tell you I could help it. I cannot help it. But the Lord has given us the spirit of self-control. Uh, yes, but I take that spirit, put it aside, and the Godzilla comes out. <laughs> so, how do I reject offense? Just by that. The word says that the Lord has not given us the spirit of offense. He's given us the spirit of what? Power and love and self-control. Which means that if you have the Lord Jesus into, in your heart, and I believe that's all of us. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, that means that, yes, you and I, my friends, can stop offense to come into our lives. We can. We can reject it. We can say no to it. Why don't we? Some of you know um, Gerson Reyes. Gerson Reyes is the... Um, worship leader for Espanol. In fact, he's on Sunday, July 30th. He's going to be here. He's going to be leading. I love Herson. All right. Do you know Herson? All right. And uh, I'm his direct supervisor. So, you know, he reports to me. And uh, this, uh, listen, if you are around my age, in other words, if you are a late boomer or an early a millennial, you'll understand. If you have kids, you'll understand. Many times I have to talk to her son. Wonderful spirit, wonderful heart, but sometimes does stupid things. And so often I have to call him into my office. I say, hey, I mean, cl shut the door. I want to talk to you. And this is what he does. <laughs> Lord Jesus, have mercy my soul and normally I'm like okay well you should, probably should not be doing that whatever but two weeks ago I took the bait and I lost it now this is not bashing Herson because I love him but, but here's why, why I bring this up he has what we call a teachable heart or a teachable spirit. In other words, he may roll his eyes, but he sits down and we can communicate and we can both grow out of whatever mistake. And I love that because, I mean, I'm still working on the rolling of the eyes. It's going a little bit slow and slowly, you know, slower, but uh, we'll get there. I have faith. Um, but you can work with people that have that teachable spirit. We need to have that teachable spirit. Because if we don't, we think we're better than the rest. It's not going to work out. <sighs> don't worry about him. Because he heard that this morning, I also mentioned his name. And actually, he's preaching upstairs in Espanol. He said, well, vengeance is sweet. And now he's talking about me, most likely. <laughs> so don't feel bad about him. So now, we need to choose to believe the best out of people. Even if... You think, oh, they did that on purpose. Choose to believe the best. Give the benefit of the doubt. You know, when you come to an aid, <laughs> mine, um, 
then you start understanding that things like bitterness and anger and unforgiveness and offense really make no sense. These are feelings that do not change anybody, don't change the situation, just make us miserable. Many times, offense comes stronger when people that are so close to you, right? Your spouse, your children, family. My wife is here, and let me tell you this about my wife. Well, the Lord is working in both of us, but she's, the Lord is working on her too. And uh, she, you know, sometimes kind of reacts a little bit like quick. And, uh, you know, she jumps the gun and... And, uh, you know, at the beginning when we uh, were married, I didn't, you know, I, I ignore that. You know, I'm just, it's okay. It's, it's who she is. But with little time, <laughs> then uh, things did not sit well with me, and I started to take offense. Now, here's the difference between uh, my wife and I. Let's say if I say something stupid, uh, she gets offended. It'll last about two, three minutes, and she moves on. My problem is... It lasts on the clock 24 hours before I can let go. Now, the word says in Ephesians 4.26, don't sin by letting anger control you. That's beautiful. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Here's what happens when uh, I feel offended. I don't talk to her for 24 hours. Pastor, you do that? Yes, I do that. Um, and next day, I, go and come, I come to work, and I have my phone next to me, kind of waiting to see when she's going to send me a text asking or saying that she's sorry. Now, let me remind you that when the event took place about two, three minutes. She has moved on in life, literally. And the next day, I'm totally like, why am I doing him? So I have two options. A, I have to ask the Holy Spirit to help me with dealing with the offense and not take it. Or B, I have to ask the Holy Spirit that the next time she offends me is after sundown. So I do have the 24 hours to recover. That second part is not going so well for some reason. Joyce Meyer, Joyce Meyer, 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 Meyer Joyce Meyer says that your peace is your power. Peace is power. Offense takes away the peace. And if you don't think peace is power, try to live without peace. How much power do you have? No, you're miserable. You're stuck. Peace is power. We need to fight for peace. We need to treasure peace. The good news is we have the prince of peace. So... We need to say, I'm not going to be in bondage anymore. It's a decision you and I need to make. Just as much as you decide to love somebody, you have to decide not to take offense from anybody. It's a, I'm not going to be in bondage of offense. I'm going to let go. Lord, help me. Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have those who love your law. And nothing causes them to stumble. Offense is a bait that stumbles, that you're going to fall if you take that bait. Fight for your peace. The world is taking away our peace. It's trying to remove our peace. God is our prince of peace. So make a decision. You have to wake up in the morning. Because remember, the Lord said, it is impossible that offense does not come to you. So it's going to happen, Okay. Maybe you have been offended all your life. Maybe you're being offended right now. Maybe you will offend, be offended as you leave this place. It'll come to you. So you have to almost daily say, today I'm making a decision not to be offended no matter what. Lord, help me. If that's a weak area of your life, like it may possibly be mine, ask the Lord. To, um, he, he, that's his will. He doesn't want his kids to be offended. We're talking about the cross today. Thank you for the cross and what we're singing, we're worshiping in that sense. Now, God sent his son, yes, to forgive our sins, to restore us to the Father. 
but also to give us freedom. It cost Jesus a lot, his life, for your freedom and my freedom. And what a tragedy it is that because of offense, we cannot be free. That because of offense, we're in bondage. That because of offense, in essence, we're saying what you did on the cross, it is a tragedy. He did it for you and me. Might as well receive it. Point three, there's three points. There's hope. All right, point three, what do we do with offense? Number three, stop it. Stop it. You can write in parentheses, don't pass it around. Don't pass it around. In other words, don't offend others. Acknowledge what offense is. Don't take it, but don't give it. Second Corinthians 6.3 says, we give no offense in anything. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. That our ministry may not be blamed. Is the word talking about pastors and ministers? It's talking about all of us because we are all ministers. You may not be a minister that sits, that stands here in front of everyone, but you minister in your house, you minister in your work, in your place of work, you minister in the streets, in the marketplace, you minister to yourself. And as ministers, people are watching. People are watching you and me. I only pray that when I put the Godzilla suit on, nobody's watching. But guess what? My family's watching. My wife says, how dare you? And you're a pastor? Yeah, but don't tell anybody. God is watching. God is watching. So the question is, are people offending me? Or am I getting offended? There's a difference. Are people purposely offending me, or am I simply choosing to be offended? See, we put too many expectations on other people. Oh, expectations. I expect you to do this, I expect you to do that. And when we do it, people forget, take it for granted, but they focus, we focus on the little things. When I married, I told my wife, you know, you and I are not gonna fight. You and I are not going to have expectations from one another. That possibly lasted about half hour until we can. Because that's life. That's life. But we should not put expectations on people. In fact, we need to take responsibility for that offense. It's not like they're responsible is that we need to take responsibility whether or not we want to be offended or not or decide to be offended or not. See, we tend to um, deflect our problems on other people. Oh, it's because she did that. Oh, he said that. Oh, they didn't do this. That's why I'm offended. But listen, you will never be free Free, truly free indeed, if you keep blaming others for every situation in your life. Take responsibility. Do we offend just others or do we offend the Lord? Many times we offend the Lord. Let me read this. Ephesians 4. I'm going to read it from the New Life version, but you read it from whatever version you want. Ephesians 4, verses 30 and 31. Listen to it. Do not make God's Holy Spirit have sorrow for the way you live. Do not make the Holy Spirit feel sorrow for the way you and I live. The Holy Spirit has put a mark on you for the day you will be set free. Put out, 
Listen to this. Put out of your life all these things which are nothing but wrong feelings. Bad feelings about other people. Do you right now have any negative feeling, any bad feeling about anybody in your life? Anybody? Put out in your life all these things, bad feelings about other people, anger, temper, loud talk, bad talk, which hurts other people, and bad feelings which hurt your neighbor. My friends, we're not in heaven yet, and our nature normally is to offend, knowing or unknowingly, and the temptation is to be offended. Let's not take the bait. I would like the uh, worship team to please come out if they can. I waited a little bit too long last uh, in the morning service, and they were not coming out. I said, if you don't come out now, I'm going to start singing. I shouldn't, but I will. But now they are ready to go, so. Listen, this is what Jesus said. It's in your notes. Out of Matthew eleven six, he said, Blessed is he who is not Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Who's not offended. But what I mean, what I mean because of me. The context here is Jesus, who by the way, he offended everyone. He didn't offend people because of his character, because of his personality, because of his anger. No. He simply offended people because he spoke the truth. So we also have to admit and acknowledge that we're going to offend people if we speak the truth of God. Okay? That's, that's, a, that's put aside. But remember when John the Baptist was put into prison? I mean, after he talked about the Lord and he preached and, you know, whatever, he was put in prison. And he hears that Jesus is just roaming the streets doing ministry. And he, I do believe, the, the word doesn't tell us that, but I do think he might be, he maybe got a little bit offended. I spoke about you, Jesus. I preach about you. I prepare the way for you. And you are there for you. And look where I am. And he sends his friends and say, would you just go ask him and see if he's the true Messiah? And he, Jesus, after giving him a bunch of reasons, he says, blessed is he. It's like saying, blessed are you, John, if you are not offended for my cause. If offense is only going to increase, we need to be very aware of it, of the dangers of offense and not be offended for the cause of Christ. Now, well, you may think, well, that happened then because, you know, there were some expectations put onto Jesus. What was the expectation? Oh, he's going to come and free us. 2,000 years, unfortunately, have passed and we tend to do the same thing. People get angry with God, why? Because things don't go according to their understanding, their desire. Jesus does not answer the, our own even wicked desires of our hearts. And people get offended. Paul, all right, Paul the Apostle, 2,000 years ago, listen to this prayer that he had. It's like if he was praying <laughs> for us. 2,000 years ago, dealing with offense. And if we think it's a sign of times, offense has just increased and will continue to do so. Do we need prayer about that? Look what he says. Philippians 1, verses 9 and 10. Philippians 1. And this is Paul saying, And this I pray, that your love, people, your love celebration, those who are listening online, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge 
and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent that you may be sincere and listen to this and without offense to the day of Christ Paul is praying telling people hey don't be offense don't take the bait don't get into the trap acknowledge it reject it don't take it don't pass it forward how much do we need to pray today for that brothers and sisters today is the third Sunday of the month and normally on the third Sunday we have altar prayers during the time of worship today we're doing it a little bit different we're actually going to have a time of altar prayer right now and I would like to ask all present prayer partners if you're here a prayer partner could you please just make your way up front right now come come up front and get ready now for the rest of you I want to ask you to stand up for in a minute not yet because I want you to think about this number one the Lord tells us that what we need to really the bottom line that what we need to face offense is more love and who is love Jesus and we need peace we need love and we need peace in order to not take the bait of offense well we have the Prince of Peace we have the Prince of Peace so in Jesus we have everything we have to not be a slave of offense anymore I would like for you to please stand to your feet everyone and before you make your way up front I'm going to tell you why I'm inviting you to pray up front before you make any move here if you have anything an offense against anybody here today you don't come walking to the front you don't stand still you go and talk to that person and you may think oh but what are they gonna think who cares what people think what you should care for is what the Lord thinks so make it right sometimes what it takes is simply an action of forgiveness just repent before that person be the first one to take that step why delay it and number two if you have any kind of offense and by the way many people get offended at churches because you're offended at uh, the staff and the pastors and others and oh let's repent before the Lord and if you know of any feelings of offense that you may have I would invite you to come up front and take the hand of these men and women these are trained prayer partners men and women of faith that want to agree with you in whatever it is that you bring forth which means it's not just offense anything you need this is prayer time here at celebration if you need healing whether it's physical healing healing of your heart come forth if you need to actually repent of offense come forth whatever if you need the Lord if you think I don't think I have the, the Spirit of God in me come forth and pray with, with them we're gonna take time the service is not gonna be over yet I'm gonna be praying a little bit and then pastor I believe pastor Dan will come and close the service in a minute but let's do business with the Lord so right now the altars are open I would like you to please come if you want and let's take care of that business